enemy agent that uses a very simple AI system might often get stuck while trying to follow a player or for example might keep hitting the obstacle which can break the immersion. In this tutorial series I will show you how we can use context steering AI to ensure that our enemy moves in a more convincing way so basically is able to avoid obstacles while also chasing the player. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. In this first part, I'll explain how exactly the context steering works before in the next part we will tackle how to create some code that will implement this context steering into Unity. Context steering is an AI technique that allows us to make the enemy more aware of its surrounding, thus making a better decision on which direction to choose to move on so that it can reach its target. The link to the original article about context steering will be linked in the description. Now in a very basic AI we gave the enemy the direction that leads it directly to the player, which means that if there is an obstacle in between those two, the enemy can be stuck to walking in the direction of the obstacle not minding it at all. Now to fix it we need to collect the data about the environment of our enemy, so we are going to choose 8 directions that go around the enemy, 4 cardinal and 4 diagonal, we can give it more directions. The basic idea is that we are going to detect the obstacles around the enemy as well as the directions that are best suited to follow the target, to go near the target. Now of course if we were to follow those directions we would get and jagged a robotic like movement. So instead what we want to do is we want to calculate the average vector which is this uh, yellow line that directs us towards the target which as you can see is pretty much the same as in our simple AI but now we take into account also the obstacle around the enemy. So the main idea is that we want to collect the data in this case, we have the directions that will lead us closer to the player's position. Now, we want to consider the directions that have the alpha, so the angle between the direct uh, path to the player and the direction out of our eight possible directions. The alpha between those two is less than 90. This means that we will get closer to the player if we follow this direction. If the angle is greater than 90 degrees, then we are going to exclude this direction as we do not want to follow it. Now, of course, some of those directions are more efficient than the others. So we are going to index those directions from 0 till 7, and we are going to give them weights based on how accurately they will lead us to the target. So, for example, this downwards direction will lead us somewhat to the player to our target, of course those weights are between 0 and 1, where 0 means that the direction is useless in this case and the high value near 1 means that this is a perfect direction to follow. Now we are going to do this for every steering behavior that we have and we are going to save those in two arrays, interest array and danger array. Now each element of the array corresponds to one of the directions that we have established so here you can see the same values that were in the previous slide. Now we are going to also introduce obstacle detection and this algorithm will put inside the danger array the directions which will lead us towards the obstacle. Maybe it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but we want to know which direction will lead us towards the obstacle. And of course the problem could be that there is an obstacle as well as the target in the same direction and if we take into account both of those, so if we take the interest values and remove the danger directions, we may end up with no direction at all to follow. So we're going to add a weight based on the distance from the enemy to this obstacle. So if the obstacle is very close, we want to put one in there. Now in case of our interest, we rarely see one here, so we're going to exclude the danger direction. While in case the uh, obstacle is very far from our enemy, we are going to put much lower weight compared to the interest direction so that we can somewhat walk towards the obstacle still while following the player, which should give us a much better result with the enemy chasing our target or the player. Now at the end we want to subtract from the interest values the danger values, 
which means that we subtract from each field the corresponding field in the danger array and we clamp the value between 0 and 1, which end up with those values available for us, so only those directions are valid. One way to obtain the result from it would be to select the value that is highest and the corresponding direction and use it to move our enemy. Now if we take a look at the movement of our enemy, we are going to see that it performs some sort of a robot-like jagged movement at some point. So instead what we can do is have a for loop that will calculate the average direction by simply adding the directions times the weight and then normalizing the vector to get the average direction to follow. So now the resulting movement is much smoother, the movement the direction is more in a continuous space rather than limited to those 8 directions and this makes the enemy follow much closer to the movement of the player. So far if you are enjoying this video leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel it would help me a lot, you can also click that thanks button, I would really appreciate it. Now one more issue that we might have is that if we make the enemy follow the player directly it might get stuck in the wall and might kind of not know where to go because we are directly behind an obstacle so our context steering behavior doesn't really help with that. Our enemy can much more smoothly uh, go around the obstacles but the obstacle that is just in front of the player will still block the enemy from moving correctly. To fix this behavior, we are going to make the enemy cache the position of the player as long as it sees the player. This means that the enemy will reach the last seen position of the player. Even if I hide behind this rock, the enemy will go to the last seen position and if the player is still in range, it will be able to find the player, which will make this much more fun experience for the players. Okay? This is it for the theory section, in the next video we are going to start implementing the context steering behaviors in Unity. See you in the next video.